If you are worshiping us um, for the first time, we want to connect with you. So you can um, go online to slumc.org slash connect. And there you'll find ways that we can get to know you, ways to connect with us as well. If you're worshiping online this morning, greetings in the name of Christ. And we hope that you'll go to our website as well, slumc.org slash connect. And I have got my um, phone up and I've greeted people in the name of Christ. So if you have your phone and you want to engage people in worship, we invite you to do so so that they, those online and those of you in person can feel the love and peace of Christ from all of those in worship this morning. We have a full day of worship together. Um, and so after the service, we will be led down into our Family Life Center where we have lunch for everyone. We hope that you will come and enjoy our big event together. And in our worship service, we'll have a prayer time. And I want to invite you to submit your prayer request. You can do that online at the website I just mentioned, or we have prayer request cards in the queue. And you can put these in the offering plate when that comes around, or you can hand it to us following the service. We are glad that you're here this morning in greetings in the name of Christ. Buenos días, bienvenidos todos a cada uno de ustedes. Damos gracias a Dios porque por su asistencia. Damos gracias a Dios por este especial servicio de recaudación de fondos para el mejoramiento de nuestra iglesia. Le damos las gracias de antemano por todas sus donaciones y todos los fondos que pueden donar a la iglesia para que la iglesia siga adelante y siga prosperando. Que Dios les bendiga, que Dios les guarde y que nos esperamos después del servicio allá en el, en el salón social. Now go we'll stand and we'll worship together. God calls all of us. May our answer today and always be the words of our professional processional hymn. Please join me in hymn 593, all verses.
Dios, Dios mío eres tú, de madrugada te buscaré, mi alma tiene sed de ti, mi carne te anhela, en tierra seca y árida, donde no hay aguas. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory. Porque mejor es tu misericordia que la vida, mis labios te alabarán. So I will bless you as long as I live, I will lift up my hands and call your name. Como de médula y de grosura, serás saciada mi alma, y con labios de rupilo te alabará mi boca, cuando me acuerde de ti en mi lecho, cuando medite en ti en las vigilias de la noche. For you, I have, for you have my help, and in the shadows of your wings I sing for joy. My soul clings to you, your right hand upholds me. Let us pray. Holy God, we gather for worship to sing your praise and hear your word. Speak to us now that we may be wise enough to receive your call. Strengthen us now that we may be brave enough to answer when you call. Guide us now that we may follow where you would have us go. Be with us now that your spirit will move us in faith, commitment, and love. Amen. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on the throne, 
high and lofty. And the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above them. Each had six wings. With two, they covered their face. And with two, they covered their feet. And with two, they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me. I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a, pe among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt is departed, and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. Let us pray. Holy God, like Isaiah the prophet, we stand in awe of your glory. Humbled before you and aware of our need for your grace. May your holy presence touch our hearts so that we are made clean and whole. God, uh, our creator, continue to build this household of faith into what you want us to be. Christ, our Savior, lead us to do as you will. Spirit, our power, strengthen us for the work of the kingdom, a worship and a service which is ours today as well as tomorrow. Holy God, fill this place and us your people, with your presence. Amen. Well, good morning, church. It is wonderful to, to be with you in worship as we come together in one unified time of worship this morning for a day of celebration to uh, be thankful for what God has done, is doing, and what God will do in the life of our church and in the ministry that we share. My name is Amy Spivey, and I am privileged to be one of the pastors here in this congregation. And I am so thankful that we are able to share together on a beautiful uh, spring day. It's officially spring, right? I think today the sun is shining, the air was nice and crisp, yet the sun was warm and God has welcomed us into this place today. And we have heard the word from Isaiah this morning, the prophet. As we think about that text today, I'm reminded of a captivate, captivating moment in cinematic history. Now, think with me for a moment there's a little lion cub, and he's going to be presented to a host of animals, and his name is Simba. Now, maybe you know who Simba is, and probably some of this crew right up front here knows who Simba is. Yes, we even have a hand-waving, right? Simba is going to be presented to those who, who inhabit the Pride Lands. Now, Rafiki, who is a mandrel, is a spiritual guide for the lions, and he steps out onto the Pride Rock, and he lifts baby Simba up and presents the lion cub to all the animals 
of the Pride Lands. Now, this presentation evokes cheers and excited calls by the animals. And all the while, the music is building, and this is what's being sung. It's the circle of life. And it moves us all through despair and hope, through faith and love, till we find our place on the path unwinding the circle of life. All right, this scene from The Lion King is all inspiring for the animals. All of those who are cheering and who are excitedly calling to the one who will become their king. But it's also, I think, all inspiring to those who are watching it on the screen. Right now, I have seen this particular movie in varying seasons of my life, and maybe you have too, right? Maybe you remember seeing it when it was first released. I do. Or maybe you remember watching it at some point along the way with your kids or with your grandkids. Maybe you've seen the stage version. Maybe you've seen the the stage version of it, right? It comes to life. And every single time I've seen it, I've been moved by it. Now, I rewatched it in preparation for today a number of times. And every time I still get goosebumps, right? It's, it, it, it's a moving scene in that film, Right, I'm awestruck by the the vivid colors and all the lively sounds and, of course, that compelling story as Simba is raised high over the Pride Lands. Now, you see, to be awestruck by something or by someone, according to a dictionary definition is to have an overwhelming feeling of reverence or admiration or fear produced by that which is grand or sublime or extremely powerful. Now, if I could have shown you that clip, I would have. And you're probably thinking, why didn't Pastor Amy show you that? Well, because Disney is, is very tight on copyright, and I'm not allowed But you can go home today and Google it and watch it again or put it in your DVD player or find it on your streaming um, Disney Plus, wherever you want, and watch it again, right? Because it's a reminder of what it means to be awestruck, right? A feeling of reverence, right? Being overwhelmed or overcome by something grand. And I would imagine that even beyond the the cinematic creation like The Lion King, we're probably awestruck by our lives, maybe even on a daily basis, maybe a vivid sunset. Um, Did you see the sunset Friday night? Like it was amazing Friday night, a vivid sunset. Uh, Maybe your child walks for the first time or says their first word maybe a music concert or a mountain vista or a remarkable work of art or even a a historical landmark. Moments of awe come in both the simplicity of everyday life as well as those monumental experiences of creation and the world around us. You know, like a Grand Canyon, Northern Lights, Cinderella's Castle, Eiffel Tower, Giant Sequoias, Grandfather Mountain, Swinging Bridge kind of experience. You know those kinds of experiences that you've seen and been awestruck by them? What happens when we're awestruck by things like this, whether it's the everyday things or those monumental things, is that in them we are moved. We are moved. 
And you may or may not be surprised, but scientists study the feeling of awe. They study what it, it, it means in the world, in human life. Scientists study the feeling of all in the context of, of things personally, physiologically, socially, culturally, and spiritually. Now, Ralph Waldo Emerson, an American poet and essay, essayist, writes in his essay, Nature, about the feeling of awe, what it means to be awestruck by something. So hear this, within these plantations of God, standing on the bare ground, my head bathed with the blithe air and uplifted into infinite space, all egotism vanishes. Right? Ultimately, what he's saying is, is that when we are all struck by something, it moves us beyond ourselves. Right? There's just something that, that changes, right? Personally, it changes um, in our minds, in our hearts. Right? And, and we realize that, that it often changes our countenance. If we're standing before the vastness around us, something that we're connecting with, we find ourselves open to it. And that does, as Emerson says, takes us beyond ourselves. And in a sense, we become small, don't we? If we're all struck by something, we feel humbled by it. We maybe even at times have said, I shrink before it. That's kind of how I felt when, when my family several years ago went to Mount Rushmore and I stood below those, those faces that in pictures seem really small, but then standing below it, and we happened to be there on a beautiful day like today, I mean, they, I was just, I shrunk before them. So if we're humbled and we're moved, right, by being awestruck. We do, we do that in jaw-dropping, smile-raising, tear-shedding, and goosebump-feeling kind of ways. And people study goosebumps too, you know, because that is, an, that is a distinct physiological response to, to being moved by something, right? To... to to shrinking before something amazing. Now, maybe you've come along these reflections about being awestruck and the feeling of awe, and you're beginning to make the connection, making that connection to Isaiah. Right? We, we see an image before us of Isaiah. Now, we can guess which of the images in that picture is Isaiah, right? That little, that little bitty person, right? Because Isaiah is awestruck by God. Isaiah is having one of those jaw-dropping, smile-raising, tear-shedding, goosebump-feeling kind of moments, right? And Isaiah, Isaiah comes before God, and his name literally means God saves. So if Isaiah is going to be one who is going to go for God, who's, who's, going, to, who's going to speak for God as a prophet, then think about the the power in his name as he goes, God saves. Now, in the text that we heard today, we realize that, that Isaiah is meeting God in a holy moment, right? God is the holiest of holies. And, and 
really holy just means sacred, right? Something or some, someone who is holy is worshipped, is, is sacred, is lifted up, is venerated. And literally, Isaiah stands before God in the temple and he sees himself smaller and deeply humbled. Isaiah is literally awestruck, right? A goosebump kind of awestruck. Now, in this divine vision, which is often called in this particular part of Isaiah, a divine vision for the prophet, for the one who is going to speak for God, who's going to go to where the people are and tell them about God and remind them about their life with God, we realize that that this vision of God, high and lofty, right, this vision of God so magnificently holy, right, a vision where the Scripture says God's robe, the hem of God's robe, fills the temple. You see, this is a a vision that brings Isaiah into an awe-inspiring moment, right? Isaiah is moved. Now let's look a little bit more into that passage because there's lots going on, right? As God is is filling the space with God's robe, there are seraphs, it says, who are soaring above and around God. And there are occasions, particularly in the Old Testament, where there is mention of seraphs, right? Heavenly beings, angels, if you will. Now, Isaiah's account of a seraph is a little bit different than others, but these heavenly angels are are serving God. They even call out, holy, holy, holy. Right? We hear that. That's an, that's an ancient hymn, that's an ancient hymn, and we, we hear it if, if you've been a part of Holy Communion here with St. Luke's. We hear that, holy, 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 spoken. Right? So when the seraphs who are, who are in this divine vision soaring around God, there's shaking of the temple and there's smoke. Wow. What a remarkable image of the presence of God an awe-inspiring moment when Isaiah is moved. Now, I want to just share with you a few ways that, that the, the story, the Scripture reading tells us of how Isaiah is moved. First, Isaiah sees himself with humility, right? He shrinks before God. And you see, this is where he finds himself realizing that he needs God, that he needs God's salvation. So much so that in this moment, he feels rather unworthy because he says, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips. And I kind of imagine that his inner voice is saying there is absolutely no way that I can speak for God. I'm not worthy. I'm lost. Now, the, the second way that I think Isaiah is moved is, is when one of the seraphs touches Isaiah's mouth with a hot coal saying your guilt has departed and your sin has been blotted out. Now, fire is commonly used to to purify or to cleanse. So if he is feeling lost and unworthy, the seraph comes and touches his lips to make him clean. So Isaiah is symbolically cleansed, and receives forgiveness and freedom. 
And he is worthy standing before God, ex being extended God's forgiveness. Now, the third thing that I want to say about Isaiah being moved by his awe-inspiring encounter with God is that Isaiah is called to serve. Now the Lord asks, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And Isaiah says, here I am, send me. Isaiah's awe-inspiring experience transforms his life and makes him ready to serve. You see, in his service, he will speak for God. He will reflect God, the one who is sacred, the one who is revealed, the one who is worshipped, so that others might know and be transformed by God as well. So Isaiah, God saves, says, Here I am, Lord. He will bring to the people that life-changing, awe-inspiring salvation of God. And I think today as we look at this, this divine vision, this call of Isaiah, we can probably ask the same question that we heard Chris read from Isaiah 6-8. Who will go for us? And I wonder today, will we, like Isaiah, be awestruck and moved by God? Now, I was working in a church office one day some years ago when a young man who had become a part of the church where I was serving through marriage, he knocked with urgency on my door. Like, he, he knocked. He was in a frenzy, and after he had made a hurried drive to the church, it took a, a, a couple of minutes for me to gain clarity about what his purpose was for visiting. He had had a heartfelt, awe-inspiring encounter with God, and he was moved. He was more aware than ever before that he needed God. He knew that he wanted to experience God's grace and forgiveness. And ultimately, he had an understanding that, that he wanted other people to know that from his own life. And Somehow that day, he was moved to say yes to God in a way that he hadn't before. He was moved to be baptized, and he was moved to serve. He shared his profession of faith with the church, and we baptized him in the river. And that was quite an experience. He was maybe six foot five. What a remarkable transformation because through a heartfelt, awe-inspiring encounter with God, he said yes in a way that he had never said it before, and his life was changed. Now, as much as he was awestruck by God, I was awestruck by this young man's faith, right in a jaw-dropping, smile-raising, tear-shedding and goose-bump-feeling kind of way. That's what happens when we are open and present with God. That's what happens when we, as a worshiping fellowship, Right, as those who are willing to, to sing the praises of God, to experience the joy of, of children, those who are willing to share our hearts of prayer and thanksgiving, when we're willing to stand and come 
before God. Open ourselves up. And I believe that we will be all inspired by the work of God in our lives and in the lives of those around us. Now, I don't know your hearts today. I don't know your, your lives of faith. Maybe you, in thinking about Isaiah's call, how Isaiah stands before God, maybe you will experience an awe-inspiring moment with God today, and maybe that will be an opportunity for you to say yes to God in a way you've never said yes before. Or maybe you will be reminded and will know today for the second or the 14th or the 200th time whether it's the first or the 200th, that God offers us grace and forgiveness and seeks to to offer us the opportunity to respond. So maybe we today, church, will know of that love, that forgiveness, that grace. We will know that we are worthy, like Isaiah, to be people who answer the question that's offered by the Lord in front of Isaiah, who will go for us. Now, whether it's your first time of saying yes today or it's your 200th, I pray that you will know the presence of God. And if you have a desire in faith to learn more, to experience more, to know more, to to draw closer to God and, and want to talk with Pastor Monica or with me, we will be glad to do that. But we pray that, church, we will be moved, that we will be awestruck, that we will be inspired so that no matter where we are on our journey of faith, that we, like Isaiah, and like the young man who who knocked on my office door, that we will be moved to respond to God. I pray that in faith we as God's church, St. Luke's, will seek to reflect God, to offer God to others so that others will be moved and that we will know that forgiveness in such a way that we can share it with others. Who will go for us? As we join our hearts and lives today in this time of worship, in this day of celebration, as as we're reminded what it means to be awestruck by the, the work of God through grace, as we think about Isaiah, whose life was completely changed so that he might speak for God and share that message, God saves. This is our opportunity, our privilege today to stand before God in awe of what God has done, is doing, and will do in us and through us. And I hope that we will be moved with goosebumps to say yes to God, trusting in God's presence and God's promise in our lives. So this is our opportunity today, church, to prayerfully consider that question, who will go for us? Who will go for us? I believe that God will 
enable us in whatever way we can to respond. And so I'm going to invite us into a time of prayer. Now I'm going to give you the opportunity. If you would like to stand where you are, if you'd like to stay seated, that's fine. I'm going to give you that option. But if you feel so moved to stand for a moment as we pray together, I want to invite you to do that. So we can go to God in prayer. We can close our eyes and stand if you feel led this morning. Gracious God, who will go for us, the angel said. And I wonder today as we gather here in your presence, God, may, may we be awestruck by your grace and your forgiveness as your people bow, opening hearts to you, God. We pray that in this time you would draw us close, that we would say yes once again to you. Whether it's the first time today, God, whether we are, are saying yes for the 200th time, God, we pray that you would draw us near, that we would be reminded that, that you love us, that you forgive us, that we are worthy and that you call us to serve. And so may we be those today who say, here I am, Lord. Send me. And God, we know that, that we are your people, St. Luke's. The ones who you are leading into a hope-filled future. And God, we know that you can use each and every one of us. And so God, move us today by your grace, that you would uplift us and raise us up to be your people, to serve and reflect you, the holiest of holies, God, reflect you. God, we thank you for the word that you have given us. Move us and lead us Help us to say yes to you each and every day of our lives. For we pray this in your holy name. Amen. If you'll keep your heads bowed, we're going to continue this prayer time. Offering thanksgiving to God for what he has shared with us in this beautiful message from Isaiah. God, we pray this morning that your kingdom come here on earth as it is in heaven. And Lord, we lift up our voices saying, fall afresh on us this day. Pour out your spirit on us that our arms are filled with goosebumps, that our hearts are just purged from our chest because we're so excited to jump from our seats to say, Lord, here I am. I will go for you. Oh, holy and gracious God, your grace knows no bounds. That you pursue us day in and day out. You tell us that we are a child of God, that we have value beyond who we think we are. But we have something far greater because you have That you tell us of this love that knows no limits. And you pour it into us that we might breathe it out and pour it out into others. And so God, we come to in places like this seeking those wings of protection in our life. We come, oh God, wanting something more from the ordinary things that we face in our life, those, those things and the trials that we say, Lord, help us. We come seeking a way to help our neighbor because we see with compassion and empathy what they're going through. But Lord, sometimes we don't know how to help. 
And so, Lord, we pray that you will give us what we need through your Holy Spirit work in and through us. Not only that we might be transformed, but we might be an instrument of your grace that offers that transforming hope to others. God, you have called us to a time such as this to say, come on church, I love you. Let's go together. Out into a world where people need love and hope and grace. God is asking us this morning, who is with him? Who will go for us, as Amy just asked? And so, God, we lift that up this morning, that prayer. Let us ask ourselves, oh God, is it I, Lord? Is it me who you are leading? I, Lord, who you are calling to go into the hospitals and to see people. Is it I, Lord, who I need to go into my neighborhood to visit my neighbor that I might not know? Is it I, Lord, that I need to come and serve because you've given me a voice to be able to speak life and hope into each other? Is it I, Lord, who have went through the hells of fire in life that I need to share those situations with my neighbor because they stand in the place where I was? Is it I, Lord, who have walked through financial difficulty and I can share the words of hope through that? Is it I, Lord, as a child, that you say that I am special and I can be your messenger? God, we stand in awe this morning from your word that you would call Isaiah and Isaiah would be humble. And so, Lord, we pray for humility. We pray for vulnerability. And we pray that your kingdom come here on earth as it is in heaven. And we lift up our voices in unity and thanksgiving with the same hope in the prayer that you taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Each week, our ushers come forward and they grab these baskets or plates and they pass them out. And it's a time of response uh, for, for our congregation to give. Response to God's word, response to where God is living in our life. And so sometimes we may ask the question, why do we give? And I want you to take a look at this.
Lord to lead us in our final hymn, I invite you to stand. And I invite you to clap along, to sing along. This isn't a difficult song, but it's a, got such a beautiful message finishing this beautiful worship service. After such an amazing message from Pastor Amy, I know I feel my heart is stirred, and I hope you do too. So let us respond through music this morning. If you will stand with us.
um, which is that direction. And all you'll need to do is go in. You will be served a delicious lunch. It's beautifully decorated. It's a celebration that's waiting. We want all of you to stay and be a part of it. Um, if for some reason you would rather not eat in the large group space, there are a couple of side rooms if you'd rather have a smaller space, if that makes you feel a little more comfortable. But regardless, we want you to come and be a part of the celebration today. So I'm going to bless our food now, and then we're going to go because our kind um, Crucifer carrying, life carrying friends are ready to go. So let's pray. Thank you, God, for your presence in our lives, for this time of worship, as we are humbled and awestruck before you. May we be moved as we seek to reflect you in our holy plans for holy purpose. We trust, God, that you set before us a promising and hope-filled future in ministry and faith. We offer you our gratitude for the food, for the hands that have prepared it, for those who are serving it, for the fellowship that we will share around the table. God, we thank you for those who have given their gifts, their time, and their service to make this possible. And in all things, God, we pray that you would bless us as we eat together and celebrate this day. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Go in peace.